In this session, we'll learn the skills needed for emotional intelligence, and you'll be able to assess your own EQ with a screening test I'll guide you through and we'll score together at the end. You will need pen and paper, so please pause this recording if you don't already have it and come back when you're ready. First, let's talk about what makes up our EQ. There are five main domains. Number one is self-awareness. Two is managing emotions. Three is motivation. Four is empathy. And five is social skills. Now let's go through each of these domains and break down what is involved in each one of them. So let's start with the first one, self-awareness. This is our ability to understand ourselves and our own emotions and being able to identify what we're feeling and why. It's being able to identify our strengths and weaknesses where we can ask ourselves, are we able to see ourselves as other people see us or do we maybe have a distorted view of ourselves? It also involves accepting who we are, which would be our self-esteem and also what we're capable of, which would be our self-efficacy. Number two is managing emotions. This involves being able to regulate and manage our emotions appropriately. It's understanding that our emotions guide our behavior and being able to take responsibility for our emotions and our behavior. Number three is motivation. This is being motivated from within for growth and achieving our own goals. It's the ability to move through adversity and failures, accept criticism, and remain positive while continuing to achieve those goals. Number four is empathy. This is being able to recognize and understand other people's emotions and being able to respond to them appropriately. It's the ability to see situations from different perspectives, like putting ourselves in other people's shoes. It's also the ability to read people and understand what they're feeling without them telling us. And the last one is social skills. This is the ability to communicate effectively and connect with people. It involves being able to resolve problems and conflicts with others and being able to assess our own needs and the needs of others and balance them both appropriately. So let's go ahead and assess our own emotional intelligence. Now there are many assessments online, so if you'd like a more in-depth assessment than what I'm going to go through now, you can just search the internet and put in emotional intelligence tests. The one we're going to take right now is a quick screening. It's called the Emotional Intelligence Test and it's by Bill Gaultier. So go ahead and grab the pen and paper. Pause if you need to and come back when you're ready. And I'm going to ask you questions about yourself based on the five areas of functioning that we just discussed. There are three questions for each area of functioning for a total of 15 questions. Answer honestly, accept the first answer that pops into your mind, and don't overthink it. Each question asks how you act or feel in certain situations, and you're going to answer how often it is true of your actual behavior or attitude. Not what you want your behavior or attitude to be, but your actual behavior and attitude right now. Now, I'm gonna give you a, a scoring key that I want you to write at the top of your paper and you're gonna refer back to this as you answer each question. If you answer always, then that's going to be worth three points. If you answer usually, that's worth five points. Sometimes is worth seven points. Rarely is worth nine points. 
and never is worth 11 points. For each question, write down the number that corresponds to your answer, and then we're going to be adding them, add up, adding up that total at the end. So I'll say each question twice, but feel free to pause the recording if you need more time to answer. Okay, here we go. Question one. When I feel bad, I'm not sure what it is bothering me. When I feel bad, I'm not sure what it is that's bothering me. Number two. When faced with a disappointment or a loss, I try not to feel sad. When faced with a disappointment or a loss, I try not to feel sad. Number three, I put high priority on understanding how I feel when I make an important decision. I put a high priority on understanding how I feel when I make an important decision. Number four, when I am upset, it takes a long time for me to feel better. When I am upset, it takes a long time for me to feel better. Number five, when someone criticizes me unfairly, I feel bad about myself. When someone criticizes me unfairly, I feel bad about myself. Number six, my emotions are up and down. My emotions are up and down. Number seven, it's hard for me to wait to get what I want, even if I know it's for the best. It's hard for me to wait to get what I want, even if I know it's for the best. Number eight. When working on a challenge, I struggle to feel hopeful, energetic, and confident. When working on a challenge, I struggle to feel hopeful, energetic, and confident. Nine. If I have to do something I don't want to do, I put it off until later. If I have to do something I don't want to do, I put it off till later. Ten. When people share a problem with me, I think more about how they can solve it than about how difficult it feels for them. When people share a problem with me, I think more about how they could solve it than how difficult it feels for them. Eleven, in situations of conflict, I have trouble understanding other people's emotions. In situations of conflict, I have trouble understanding other people's emotions. 12. I am unable to sense other people's unspoken feelings on important issues. I am unable to sense other people's unspoken feelings on important issues. 13. I avoid engaging in conversation with people I don't know well. I avoid engaging in conversation with people I don't know well. 14. I say things to other people that I regret later. I say things to people, other people that I regret later. And the last one, number 15, in social situations, it's hard for me to build rapport with others. In social situations, it's hard for me to build rapport with others. Now let's score the test. Go ahead and add up your total score. And you can go ahead and pause this recording while you do that, and then just come back when you're ready.
EQ scores range from 45 at the low end and 165 at the high end. The average score is 105. A score of 120 and above is exceptional. So see where you fall in that range. Are you below average, average, above average, or exceptional? Now let's break down the scores for each of the five areas of functioning. And this could tell you what your strengths and weaknesses are and maybe what you need to work on and strengthen. You can make a note by these answers and I'm gonna tell you which answers belong to which domains. So for questions one through three, this is for self-awareness. One through three is self-awareness. Go ahead and write down self-awareness by um, questions one through three. For questions four through six, this is for managing emotions. Questions seven through nine are for motivation. Question 10 through 12 is for empathy. And questions 13 through 15 are for social skills.